In today's episode, we take a closer look at what it means to have faith that speaks. We will explore what Jesus defines as great faith. Hi, I'm Glennis Baptiste. Pursue is a podcast meant to ignite within you a passionate commitment to pursue intimacy with God. It provides encouragement to live in grace and truth to embrace how God sees you. This is our journey together to experience transformation. What does great faith look like? In Luke chapter 7 verses 1 to 10 in the Passion Translation, the centurion, a Roman captain, had great faith that amazed Jesus. It says, after Jesus finished giving revelation to the people on the hillside, He went on to Capernaum. A Roman military captain there had a beloved servant whom he valued highly and who was sick to the point of death. When the captain heard that Jesus was in the city, he sent some respected Jewish elders to plead with him to come and heal his dying servant. So they came to Jesus and told him, the Roman captain is a wonderful man. If anyone deserves a visit from you, it is him. Won't you please come to his home and heal his servant? For he loves the Jewish people and he even built our meeting hall for us. Jesus started off with them, but on his way there, friends of the captain stopped him and delivered this message. Master, don't bother to come to me in person, for I am not good enough for you to enter my home. I'm not worthy enough to even come out to meet one like you. But if you would just speak the word of healing from right where you are, I know that my servant will be healed. I am an ordinary man, yet I understand the power of authority, and I see that authority operating through you. I have soldiers under me who obey everything I command. I also have authorities over me whom I likewise obey. So master, just speak the word and healing will flow. Jesus marveled at this. He turned around and said to the crowd who had followed him, listen everyone, Never have I found among the people of God a man like this who believes so strongly in me. Jesus then spoke the healing word from a distance. When the man's friends returned to the home, they found the servant completely healed and doing fine. Great faith has a starting point. According to Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing. And verse 3 of our text says, When the captain heard that Jesus was in the city, He sent some respected Jewish elders to plead with him to come and heal his dying servant. This is where the Roman captain's faith started. He had heard about Jesus. He believed and acted on it. He sent the elders to find Jesus. He did not wait to meet Jesus in person, nor to be an eyewitness of his miracles to believe in him. The Roman captain had a different approach that caught Jesus' attention. He recognized the power of authority in Jesus and humbled himself. In verses 6 to 7, he said, Master, don't bother to come in person, for I am not good enough for you to even enter my home. I'm not worthy enough to even meet one like you. It didn't mean that he lacked self-worth or had esteem issues, but this was an expression of his reverential fear of who Jesus was to his deity and his power and the grace that he had to heal the sick. The centurion operated in the God kind of faith. He did not need a special sign to believe in Jesus' power to heal, but by his profession and rank, he understood how authority worked. This was the principle that he applied to his request. Verses 7 to 8 highlights the truth I want to share with you. It says, But if you would just speak the word of healing from right where you are, I know that my servant will be healed. I am an ordinary man, yet I understand the power of authority and I see that authority operating through you. I have soldiers under me who obey everything I command. I also have authorities over me whom I likewise obey. So master, just speak the word and healing will flow. Authority works with the power to issue orders, decide matters and make things happen. The centurion's confidence in the authority of Jesus to bring healing was enough to get the job done. He understood the power in Jesus' words to make things happen. 
In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11, in the New Living Translation, listen to how God explains this. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my wood. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. So God sends his word to do what he has decided. That's how he works, and it always comes to pass. Psalms 147 verses 14 to 15 in the Passion Translation says, He's the one who brings peace to your borders, feeding you the most excellent affair. He sends out his orders throughout the world. His words run as swift messengers bringing them to pass. God's word has its own movement, speed, and pace. The moment we attach our confidence to it, it immediately goes to work on our behalf. Psalms 138 verse 2 in the King James Version says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. What that means is that God put greater weight in his word above his name. That's how much weight his word carries. Our confidence is not only in the character of Jesus, but in the weight of his words to shift the circumstances that we face and move things in our favor. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 in the Passion Translation says this, we have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scriptures. When it says, first I believed, then I spoke in faith. So we also first believe, then speak in faith. Believe what? Believe in who Jesus is and draw on his authority to speak in faith. In Luke chapter 7 verses 9 to 10, Jesus said, Never have I found among the people of God a man like this who believes so strongly in me. Jesus then spoke the healing word from a distance. The foundation of great faith is a confident trust in who Jesus is. When we understand his authority and see that he is greater than the issues of our lives, we are able to cultivate faith that speaks. We can have great faith like the faith of the centurion who amazed Jesus. When we operate in the authority that he gave us to exercise on earth. Psalms 116 verses 10 to 11 says, even when it seems I'm surrounded by many liars and my own fears, and though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma, I still stay faithful to God and speak words of faith. I encourage you today to put the weight of God's words on whatever you are facing right now. Send the word of God to heal, shift, remove, and change things in your life. Let your faith speak. I look forward to sharing more with you in our next episode.